Hello again! In this video we are going to learn how to insert grids in Revit. And one of the things they are common to use in our projects is to draw the columns there. And that's the second part of the video. Let's go! Now we are going to speak about grids. They are useful for setting a specific position of certain elements in a project. For example, one of the most common is using grids in floor plans for placing columns. In Revit, the way we draw grids is very similar to levels. To draw a grid, we click on its icon at the Architecture tab. Then click anywhere for the first point of the grid, it can be here, and then click again for the second point. And notice that the bubble by default is displayed on the second point. Now it says 2, but I want this identification to be 1. This happened because I already placed a grid before. Click in the number and change to the one that you want. The squares at the extremities of the grid line indicate if we want a bubble or not. If I uncheck that box, the bubble just hides. On the other hand, if I go to this side, I click here to put a second bubble. Then I can continue adding more grid lines and if I move the pointer to this area I can see a tracking line to snap the first point along the same horizontal axis. I can also type a specific length of this temporary dimension that is appearing here. However, if I just want a grid to overlap the wall face, you can click when the distance is zero or in the end point then drag to the other side and click exactly at this point. As you can see, this bubble is automatically labeled as 2. Now drag the grip down here to put it in line with the previous one. So I place two more vertical grids in this view by just repeating the same steps. Great! Now let's start adding horizontal grid lines. Ok, the first one, as I want to overlap this wall face, I can click in this end point, as now it's hard to snap to the wall in a different position. Then notice that the grid numbering keeps counting on the same way, as the last was 4, now it says 5. However, we usually don't want to have the same counting system as for the horizontal grid lines. We can have letters here and the next grid lines will follow an alphabetical order. Now let's put two more grid lines in a horizontal direction. When I finish, I can edit the grid lines as I like. We can do that by clicking and dragging the grips on both sides, and you can see that they come all together. Revit by default puts a constraint on the movement when you place the start and end point along other grid lines, and you can see this lock symbol on both sides. I'm going to click on grid number 2, and if I unlock this grip, we can extend just this line freely. After placing the grid lines, we can easily change their position. If we click on one of them and modify the temporary dimensions, it works just exactly the same way as for the walls. Let's now insert some columns in Revit. You will see that it's very practical to do this here, especially when we use grid lines. I'm going to start with the architectural column, which you can find in the architecture tab. Select the architectural option first. Then we have one family already loaded with three types. Of course, you can find out more families on your libraries, some with more interesting shapes. But in this tutorial, one of these suits perfectly. Let's use this first one. Now we assume the grids have the purpose to place the columns. That's easy, because columns snap automatically to their intersections. So I'm going to place one column at each intersection, inside the building of course, and at the end just press escape twice. At this point, columns and grids act together, 
If I decide that they are not placed correctly, I can easily change the grid position. And you can see that the columns always stay in their intersections. Now let's look at the Options tab. Here you can choose the top constraint. At this moment the columns are set to reach the level roof. And they are going up from this floor. Because this option is set to height. Then, rotate after placement. If I check this option, I place the columns and then set a rotation angle. The option Room Bounding only works when we have room elements in the project. I haven't introduced rooms yet in this tutorial, but I can let you know that when Room Bounding is checked, the columns don't count to the room area. Let's insert a structural column. As you can see, it works the same way. The main difference is that these columns go down by default from the current plan. This option is set as depth to the top of foundation. We can notice this if we switch to an elevation view. Look, our structural column appearing over here. Due to that reason, we may have a problem on the visibility when we insert a structural column. None of the created elements are visible in the floor plan. Of course, they are going down, and I'm not seeing anything below the ground floor. Do you remember how to solve this? Ok, just exit the command column, and then, on the floor plan properties, change the range base level to top of foundation wall. Then click on apply, and you will be able to view the elements below. Good. Now, how can we very quickly add a structural column in each architectural column? On this panel, we can add multiple elements. We can place a structural column at grid intersections or at the architectural columns. I don't want a column at each grid. So, better choose architectural column. Then I select the elements. I can choose one by one. Or, to be quicker, just open a selection window to cover them all. Simple. Then click on this tick to confirm the changes. As a conclusion, this is very intuitive for an engineer that needs to make the structural project using plans from the architecture. It's easy to change the position of the grids or even add or remove columns if necessary. Ok, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to Cat in Black to watch the full list of tutorials for beginners in Revit. There are also AutoCAD tutorials if you are interested. So see you next time!